Hi, this is Robert Gephardt again. Um, it's been a while since I did a video. I've been on the road. Uh, for those of you who keep up, I've been in DC for about a month, month and a half, uh, talking to clients, uh, chasing new clients, etc., etc. Anyway, I can get into that at another point in time. Today, I just wanted to do a quick video because lately I've been doing a lot. I've been trying to promote the book. I'm working on this new course for uh, freelance translators. And so I've been pushing it a lot. But I thought, to be fair, I should talk about some of the bad points, some of the low points of freelance translation. And I thought the best way to do so would be to talk about a personal example. And this has to do with non-payment. As a freelance translator, most of the bad issues will have to do with non-payment, chances are. The fact is, as a freelance translator, you can kind of pick and choose which clients you like and which you don't. So if there is a client you don't like, you only, once you finish the job you're working on with them, you don't have to work with them again. Or if you have to because you need the money, you can then also spend time trying to find other clients. And once you do, you can try to get rid of that client, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so it can be a problem, but chances are the main issues you're going to have is are with uh, payment or lack thereof. And so that's what this story has to do with. And I will, I will name names because I couldn't care less because they still owe me money. So the person I dealt with was called, um, her name is Francesca Gini. Francesca Gini, G-I-N-I, and she has a company, I think it, I mean, it's just her, it's called Intertrado or Intertrado, and so she, uh, what she did was she, this was in late 2013, she needed a translation done, it was a long translation, she needed it done quickly, so she hired me and another translator to do it, and in fact, she was in a rush and couldn't deal with it, something, so she put us in touch, so we were basically talking to each other and trying to get it done in time which we did, and we sent it off to her. She sent it off to the client. We sent our invoices, and that was that. You know, And then a month passed, or however long it was for the payment, I can't remember, and uh, we sent a, you know, a reminder, a couple of reminders. Usually, people are pretty honest. It's just that they you know, forget to pay you, etc. And you know, so you kind of have to remind them, and more often than not, it's fine. However, in this case, she didn't pay us, and so we sent a couple other reminders. And then at some point, we got an email from her email address, but it said it was from her mother. It said, I'm sorry, but Francesca's been in the hospital. She got into an accident, and we we're like, oh, well, that's sorry to hear. And But this girl, Francesca, forgot that she had friended me on Facebook. And so about two hours, literally, after that, we got received that email, she wrote on Facebook, hey, we're having a carnival party this weekend at my place. Everyone come over. It'll be a lot of fun. So, yeah. Um, anyway, obviously, she was playing games with us. And, you know, so I wrote back. I said we knew who the end client was. And we said, OK, we're going to get in touch with the end client. She wrote back to me and just said, oh, you can't do that. She wrote back to the other translator with curse words, etc. So, yeah, obviously, she wasn't serious. And then we got in touch with the end client. End client didn't get back in touch with us. The end client, the end client by the way, their name is DTEC. And uh, I think the umbrella, the, the name of the umbrella company is Entrematic or Entrematic. Um, anyway, uh, we got in touch with their branch in, in various places. Germany got back in touch with us, said they would forward it to it Italy and, uh, and let us know what happened. And then we never heard back. Now, unfortunately, both clients, both the client we dealt with, uh, Francesca Gini, and the uh, end client are in Italy. And unfortunately, in Italy, it's hard to deal with legal recourse and to deal with lawyers or the courts in general. It just, you know, and they kind of know this. It isn't worth it for, for the amounts we're talking about. And the amounts we're talking about, she owes me about 600-something um, euro, and I think the other translator about 700 euro. Uh, and... Uh, this is without late fees or, or interest or anything like that. Um, so it isn't usually worth going through the court system to do something like this, unfortunately. So we were, weren't left with much except keep bothering her and harassing her in a way, you know, via email and whatnot. I did get her phone number, tried calling her a couple times. Obviously, that didn't help. And uh, I got her home address. But first of all, I don't live in Italy. Second of all, I wouldn't even know what to do at her home. I'm not Tony Soprano. <laughs> And uh, so I, um, so, you know, we left it at that. And I, I actually could still every week I send emails to the end client and say, um, can we get paid? Because in the meantime, I also found out that our translation was used. Our translation is up there verbatim on the, um, 
on the website. And, um, and in, I mean, yeah, anyway. And this is exactly the same translation we sent. And I know it because there's some snippets that are irregular and they're exactly the same in the file we sent to them. And the one they put, the PDF they put up on their website. I'll, I'll put links to everything so you can see what, exactly what I mean. Anyway, so we haven't gotten, gotten paid by any of these. As far as I'm concerned, they're dishonest. I gave uh, Francesca Gini a bad rating on, uh, on Pros and on Translators Cafe, I think, as well. Um, I also found out where she works now because obviously the translation gig wasn't working for her. She now works for the town uh, municipality of Varese, of Varese, which is in northern Italy. And um, so I was thinking of sending her em current employers a letter, just letting them know she's dishonest or something. Of course, I don't gain anything from it. So I'm not sure if I should carry on with that. Anyway, we'll see. Um, and so, so that's basically it. Now, looking back, what, you know, so what can you glean from this? What can you learn from this? I would say there were a couple places where we went wrong. First of all, when it's a rush job, there's, there's always that risk. And you should look at past ratings of the person and which she had none. And uh, if someone doesn't have any past ratings on Pros, on Translators Cafe, on any of these main websites, you should always ask for something up front, even for uh, an urgent translation, especially when you're talking over, I mean, whatever you feel comfortable with, you know. But here we're talking about 600 euros, which isn't the end of the world, but it's not nothing. So we, you know, we should have asked for something up front, at least. You know, say, yeah, we'll work on it. Send us 200 euro now. And, uh, and we'll work on it. You have our credentials. You know that, you know, we're serious translators because you can see it on the website. And, uh, and so you won't be disappointed. An another thing we could have done w is probably, well, I mean, you know, we, we could have asked for legal recourse. We uh, could have uh, harassed her more, I guess. I mean, uh, but I'm not even sure exactly how, except calling her in the middle of the night and whatnot, which, which obviously we could do. And if it were a bit more money, it probably would have done but those would be international phone calls for me, unfortunately. And uh, so I would just say always to use your head. And if someone does not have a past track record, ask for payment up front, or else just know that's the risk. And maybe if you've got nothing else to do that weekend, you can take the risk. You know, you're gonna do this translation, 50-50 chance I'll get paid or get paid the full amount or not, but maybe it's worth the risk. Uh, you just have to decide for yourself. Unfortunately, it's kind of a rite of passage it being in the translation business because chances are at some point you're going to get cheated, you're going to get stiffed, you're not going to get paid or you're not going to get paid a full amount. So you're going to have to deal with it. But obviously you want to minimize these instances as much as possible. Anyway, that's pretty much all I had to say about that. It's just a cautionary tale. I don't want to scare anyone too much. But it should serve as a warning to know what you're dealing with. Also, if you personally know Francesca Gini or this company, DTEC, D-I-T-E-C, or Entramatic, e and I'll, I'll put the pictures and the links and everything and you can see. If you know anyone there, feel free to let me know because I'd like to get in touch with them and, you know, hopefully get paid. Anyway, that was pretty much it. And if you have your own stories or your own nightmare scenarios or something, feel free to share them. I'd love to talk about them and share different uh, war stories and maybe uh, for the purpose of seeing what we can learn from them and how we can make sure that more of us can get paid more often. Anyway, thanks again. And if you want to get uh, regular updates, they have been semi-regular. I'm going to try to keep them more regular. Updates about freelance translation, freelancing in general and, um, and whatnot, uh, mostly but concentrating on translation and languages. Uh, then feel free to subscribe. I'll be talking about navigating the waters of freelance translation. Anyway, thanks. I'll talk to you next time.